What's up Mariners? This is Abhilash Thakur and welcome to Sailor's Guide. All right guys, so today we are going to start with the rule number seven that is risk of collision and this is very important rule and through this uh, risk of collision rule you are also going to find out how you uh, find out in the sea that there is another vessel and that is a risk of collision for us so there is process in that rule also so now we are going to start with the rule number seven that is risk of collision we have covered fifth and sixth rule that is fifth rule lookout sixth is the safe speed as you know first you need to look out what is the situation according to that you need to reduce the speed and come to the safe speed after that you have to determine that is there any risk of collision for you if there is then you need to take the action that is rule number eight okay so that is how you can remember so now we have reached up to the stage where we need to find out the risk of collision at C. So uh, here we have started with the A part that is every vessel shall use all available means appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and conditions to determine if risk of collision exists. If there is any doubt such risk shall be deemed to be exist. Now it is very simple this rule just look like like a, a rule number five which is look out the wording is uh, quite similar what they have told that you have to use all available means to find out if there is any risk of collision okay you have to you, you can use radar vhf ecdis whatever the equipments which is the navigation aid for you on board you use them to find out the risk of collision okay and after that this is if there is any doubt if you think that there may be a risk of collision or there may not be you will consider it as it is a risk of collision okay you need to consider it because they have said that you it shall be deemed to be exist deemed means considered okay considered to be exist the risk of collision you will always consider okay that's involve the a part we will go to the b part we have total four section in it a b c d this is the a part now we will jump on to the b part now okay all right guys so now we are going to start with the b part okay in this part they have explained that if the radar is fitted on board then you have to use it very very efficiently and also the radar plotting or any equivalent system so Let's read out proper use shall be made of radar equipment if fitted and operational including long range scanning to obtain early warning of risk of collision. So basically we use the radar to get the early warning of risk of collision by using the long range scanning because we can increase the range and see what's coming up next. Maybe with the eyes it's not visible but with the radar you can see and you can find out what is the risk of collision. You can get the early warning and you can plan accordingly. Yeah. Also you need to use and you need to use radar plotting which we do not use these days. We use equivalent system which is equivalent to the radar plotting that is ARPA. automatic radar plotting aid this system is been fitted with the radar only you will see the targets on the radar and you can plot them by just with the click only but before they used to do it with the radar plotting by manually they used to put the sheet on the radar screen and they used to mark on the plotting uh, a sheet okay so it was a long process but now it's with the click of the second you will get data and you can acquire uh, about 100 targets at a time that's i am a criteria of arpa anyway that is the different thing but you need to use the radar if fitted and operational to detect early warning of risk of collision and you have to use radar plotting or 
equivalent system that is ARPA these days. All right. So that's it with the B part. Let's jump on to the C part now. Okay, guys. So now we are going to start with the C part. Well, basically, it's very simple. They have told us to not take assumptions on scanty information. Scanty means a little, little information. You will never take assumptions because of the scanty information that is very important on ship you need to verify the things twice at least if you're taking the bearing you have taken the distance on the radar and you have taken the bearing of that vessel then you have also have to check it visually by using your uh, your gyro okay you need to take the bearing of that vessel visually also so you can compare that your radar bearing and your actual visual reading bearing is matching then you can verify that vessel is the same vessel which you are seeing on the radar so that is very important you need to verify the things on ship otherwise it may uh, cause a close quarter situation on ship because because of the scanty information you might take some other action which was not supposed to be taken as per the rules okay which can create a close quarter situation so while navigating you need to verify things first then you will take the action now they have said that especially scanty radar information it means now what is scanty radar information they have talked about the scanty radar information like if there is a false target you see the target on the radar screen but actually you are seeing outside nothing is there it means the radar is showing you the false target it doesn't exist but it's still showing on the radar because of some problem so obviously if you see is on the radar then you starting then you're taking action that is not the way you have you will do in navigation you will do uh, you have to verify it visually and by the radar then only you will take the action all right that is how you do it so that is what is all about the C part. So take the full information, then only take the action for risk of collision. So let's go to the D part, which is very, very important of this route. Let's go. All right, guys. So now we have reached up to the most important part of this rule. That is D part. In this part, they have told us how to determine if the risk of collision exists. Now at C, they have told that there are two methods which you have to apply if to find out the risk of collision so they are saying for determining the risk of collision exists the following consideration shall be among those taken into account so there are two considerations to, uh, which has to be taken into account so this is the first one they said the risk of collision exists shall be deemed to be exist deemed i have already told you considered considered to be exist if the compass bearing of an approaching vessel does not appreciably change simply means if the compass bearing you are taking the bearing of a certain vessel okay let's say it's 045 all right and now after six minutes you again took in the bearing it's again 045 after 12 minutes again 044043 not changing considerably i'm not saying the same but little bit difference one or two degrees nothing more it means that is a risk of collision for you guys it means that vessel is approaching you and it is going to be a risk of collision for you all right so the bearing needs to be changed it could be closing it could be opening so what is closing and opening of the bearing it means if the vessel's bearing let's say your heading is 000 let's say your heading is 000 all right and some other vessel is coming from here so of course when it starts coming your bearing will be 045 let's say now after six minutes it's 030 after some time it will be 000 then again it will be 350 345 and so on all right but it should be changing considerably if it is not changing let's say you have taken the bearing it's 045 after some time it's again 045 or 043 it's not changing considerably so it means it is going to be a risk of collision for you you may get into the close quarter situation 
with this vessel all right so now what i was explaining that is closing and opening of bear bearing this is a example of closing of bearing it means the bearing is reducing 045 after 030 this bearing is closing it means it is coming closer and it will get clear because it is changing considerably so it is it may not be a risk of collision for you for opening of bearing let's say it is 045 after some time you check it is 050 of course it could be the case because if your speed is too much more than this vessel considerably more than this vessel then of course this vessel will look like it is moving behind so of course the bearing will be increasing that is the opening of the bearing Okay, commonly we ask to the carrier that uh, what is the good, what is good for you closing of the bearing or opening of the bearing but the answer is it could be both could be good because if it is changing appreciably then there is no risk of collision of course and if it is not changing appreciably it is changing to to 11 degrees then it means it could closing or opening it may be bad for you because the risk of collision will be existing okay so this is what the first part says okay guys so we have come to the second part here they are saying even if the bearing is changing appreciably or evident bearing change is evident but still the risk of collision may exist when you are approaching a very large vessel or tow or when approaching a vessel at close range so there are three situations when the risk of collision may exist even when the bearing is changing you need to consider these things also if you are approaching a very large vessel a vessel is very large let's say 400 500 meters all right so you are taking a bearing of the head the bearing of the head is changing of course it might get clear but you may hit the stern because it's very large you have to take this thing into account the vessel's length okay another thing is tow you know already the tug and tow i'll raise it up you know already the tug and tow the tug is pulling a bigger vessel and you are taking a bearing of this tug but you may hit this one that could be the case this bearing is changing no problem but you may hit the vessel this thing you need to take care well while you are navigating while you are considering the risk of collision very simple another thing they are saying a vessel at close range if vessel is very close to you of course it will seem like that the bearing is changing because it is very close to you but that is dangerous for you because the space is less and you may hit the target all right so there are three situation where you can still have existence of the risk of collision when the vessel is very big when there is a tug and tow and when the vessel is at close range so there are situation where risk of collision may exist so basically they have said two things if the bearing is not changing then you will consider that the risk of collision exist even if it is changing you have to consider that a vessel should not be that long or it is tug or tow or it is at a close range these things you need to be careful while you are considering the risk of collision for you okay okay so in this video i have explained everything to you i think this video must be helpful to you because it is very important rule that is the risk of collision and especially the d part is the most important part of this rule you need to remember this thing by heart and you need to keep this mind keep this thing in mind okay all right that's it for the rule number 7 guys i think i have explained uh, enough for this rule and Uh, in this rule if you have any doubts you can put down in the comment box and also if you like this video please press the like button and subscribe my channel press the notification bell so you don't miss out the video which are coming up next and share this video to all your mariners friend that will help me for uh, boosting up my confidence so this is abhilash thakur signing off